it is officially Christmas season and I'm gonna be sharing several DIYs that I created especially for my home this year and I'll be sharing how my Christmas tree turned out at the very end. Jingle bells ringing in my ear Jingle bell a sound that's oh so dear Frosty the snowman is all around town Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, as well as extreme before and after room transformation. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, please make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. As you know, I changed up my color scheme this year, so I had a lot of different things to create in order to make my home beautiful for the holidays. And this is what I came up with. As they walk all right, so for this first DIY, I'm gonna be using this snow globe that I found in Target's Dollar Spot. This costs $5, and what's great about this is that it is completely glass. The globe is glass, as well as the bottom base, it's just painted white. And it's very nice, well-made, and actually quite heavy for its size. So I thought it was great quality. However, I wasn't really into the white base. So I decided to give it a very nice metallic antique brass look with this spray paint. And I spray painted the bottom base so that it would match my decor this year. And yeah, you'll see those little lanterns later on in this video. Just make sure to take your time when you're spray painting. All right, so when it was dry, what I did was I took some floral foam that I had on hand, I cut it down to fit inside the base. Then I had this little towel from Dollar Tree's um, automotive section. I've had this for a little while and I just keep cutting scraps from it. And I cut a little piece, wrapped it around the foam and inserted it inside. And so I had these little trees and these are actually from my little snow globe DIYs that I did last year. Since I was changing things up, I thought I'd go ahead and use these. Now these were originally from Dollar Tree and all I did was put them on some cardboard and then just add a little bit of snow on top. I had to cut it down a little bit because the base was a little bit too large for this snow globe, but after I did that, it fit perfect. And all I did was go back in with some remaining snow and fill in the areas all around them. Next, I just added the globe and a blue ribbon to match my new decor, and that was it for this DIY. Now, since you guys already saw a sneak peek of these, I'm gonna go ahead and do this next. Now, these little lanterns came from Dollar Tree. I bought them last year, but never used them. So I thought, why not try it this year? And of course, I gave it that same coat of spray paint of that antique brass. I left the little plastics in the windows so that I could protect the inside as I spray painted it. So once it was dry, I did remove that plastic and then what I did was I cut out one of the sections so that I can create a template for what I was going to use to cover them back up. I decided to use this vellum paper that I found at Hobby Lobby. It was 99 cents originally, but it was 50% off so I got them for 50 cents. And the reason I wanted to use them were because they were a little bit see-through. Using that little plastic piece as my template, I made sure to cut pieces big enough for them and then I used it to trace it all along so that I can then cut them into the shape that I needed for the lanterns. Once I had my pattern traced out, I folded it over on itself twice and then I cut all three pieces at the same time. Next, in order to add a little bit of color, I decided to get some acrylic paint in two different colors of green and began to paint little wreaths on each of the little sides on top of the you know, music sheets. And this is really easy. This is just two little strokes in the same direction all the way around. And then I added some little berries throughout. 
Next, with a little bit of clear craft glue from Dollar Tree that I had on hand, I used them to glue them back into the insides of the lantern. I didn't use hot glue for this because it was just one, gonna get too messy, and two, I didn't want it to dry too fast and get a little lumpy, and then the paper did not lay flat. Finally, I took some sprigs from some old Dollar Tree ornaments that I had removed and then uh, some blue ribbon again to match my new decor and then I just hot glued it to the top section of the little lantern. And then of course I added a blue little bow as well. And I made sure to use a lighter on the ends of the ribbon so that it would not fray. And that was it for this DIY. Okay, so it was time to create a new wreath for Christmas this year. And I use this wreath form. If you recall, this was from my fall wreath. I pulled up all those picks, put them in a bag, and I decided to use it for this. Now, I did go buy some new picks at Hobby Lobby. And if you want to recreate this, I'll let you know how much it costs. These were all 50% off. And I used three of the large that were $2.50 a piece, three of the mediums that were two a piece, three of the blue picks, which were $1.50 a piece, and then three of the eucalyptus from Walmart that were 99 cents a piece, which turned out to all be $21. And I thought it was a pretty good deal considering the fact that most of the wreaths I have seen are ridiculously expensive. Now, if you're wondering what happened to that red berry wreath that I thrifted a little while ago and remade, my mom took it. I get to enjoy it while I'm at her house. So the first thing I did was remove all of the individual picks from each of the picks if that makes sense. <laughs> you don't want to use the pig's hole because then you won't be able to insert them correctly in your wreath. And I started with the larger picks and all I did was insert them throughout. I had a little bit of hot glue on the ends and just kind of made them all face the same direction. And this is going to make my wreath look a little bit larger than what it is. Now I spaced them out and then I came back in and added in areas that needed a little bit more. Next, I use the more realistic pine needles in front of those. Again, I pulled them off the picks, making them all individual. And what I did was I laid them out on the wreath first. And then I would go around, pick them back up again, add a little bit of hot glue, and then put them back in the area that they were. This kind of gave me an idea of where I wanted them to begin with. That way I didn't add too many in one area and not in the other. So then... After I did those, I added the little eucalyptus leaves from Walmart. Again, I used individual stems and then hot glued the tips and then placed them throughout. Then taking the berry picks, I removed each individual piece and added them through the front of the wreath as well. Now, remember when I made my little Believe picture frame last year? Well, I still had the rest of the bells. I only use that one. So I took that spray paint that I used earlier in the video and I spray painted them to make them look a little bit more antique and fit my decor, added them to the wreath, and that was it. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach. Now, out of curiosity, do you like this more natural wreath or do you prefer the berry one better? All right, so I really wanted to try something new for you guys this year and for myself, I'm not going to lie. And I decided to try air dry clay for the very first time. I ordered these off of Debbie's Design Diaries DIY A Go Go website. I had been eyeing these for a little bit and I just wanted to try them. So this is a mold for air clay. And the first thing you do is add a little bit of cornstarch to it and brush it in through all the little creases because you don't want the air clay to stick. And then you pull the air clay out and start modeling it with your fingers, getting it a little bit soft. And then you press it into the molds. Now I was looking for a more old world 
traditional yet elegant feel this year and I thought what if I made some really adorable looking frames for my Christmas tree and um, I think you guys are gonna like how these turned out now I use this little scraper that I had to remove any excess off and cut off the end pieces it took me a couple of tries I'm not gonna lie but after you get the gist of it it gets easier and easier then once you're done pressing down your mold, you remove or peel back the silicone tray from your frame. Now these were so much fun to work with and I was kind of excited because this is something new that I hadn't tried before and honestly this would give me something really unique to add to my decor for Christmas this year. So next I went online and I started looking for vintage looking landscape pictures. Then you print them out and cut them in order to fit into those frames. Oh my gosh, this was so cute. I had so much fun making these. These were all different sizes and shapes and I just used simple scissors to cut them. Now before I did anything with the print, I needed to paint these first and I used Treasure Gold by Plaid. This is a highly pigmented acrylic paint that looks absolutely stunning when you paint it on. So I painted each of the little frames gold, making them look like antique gold frames. And then once they were dry, I used Mod Podge to add the little pictures or paintings onto the center of the frame. Now the center of the frame isn't completely flat. It does kind of have like a little, I guess, higher up bump in the center and it goes down on the corners. And so it will wrinkle a little bit if you try this, but I thought it just added to the antique little look that I was going for anyways. After those dry, the only thing left to do was add little ribbons to the backs in order to hang them on the Christmas tree. And these are some of the most adorable little ornaments I think I've ever made. Christmas lights are all around. I can see them now. It's like they spell your name. All right, so continuing with that gold frame theme, I picked up these papers over at Hobby Lobby. They had these for 50% off in the scrapbook aisle, and I had this frame from when my oldest daughter had a nursery. As you can see, my style definitely has changed. And I had originally painted the frame white, and now I'm painting it gold. And I'm using that same paint that I showed you from those ornaments in order to bring out those beautiful details on that frame. I am probably certain, I'm pretty certain that that frame probably was gold or something before. And then I painted it white, not liking it. And now I'm back to that. Goes to show you a few years time changes your tastes, but I took my time and I gave this about three coats just to make sure that everything looked great. Once that was drying, I used the previous print that was in there in order to cut out some of the new scrapbook to fit into the frame. And then I found these vintage looking printables on Pinterest. I'll put the link below if you guys want to check these out. They were free. I downloaded them and then I actually reduce them in size so I can put them in the center of the frame. That way I can still see a little bit from the green around it. I use these little tabs that are just little sticky risers so that it wouldn't lie flat on the plaid. And that was it. Now let me know if I should use the berries for the print or the pine cones. All right, so this is a much anticipated tutorial. I know some of you want to learn how to make your own stockings. And of course, one benefit of this is, is that you can create any stocking in any pattern, color palette that you wish, which is why I'm doing it because I can't find 
any stockings that look like this. <laughs> so I used my stockings from last year. And as I'm cutting this fabric, this fabric is actually doubled on itself. And I'm making sure that the pattern in the front matches the pattern in the back. So if there's a green stripe in the front, there's also a green stripe in the back when I sew it. So I can at least have nice little seams all around. Now, after I cut them out, I took my rotary blade to cut out the pattern a little bit tighter around the stockings, also giving me that seam allowance that I need. Now this little thing is one of the best things to have when you're cutting fabric, especially when you have little curves just like this. Now I wanted these stockings to have that furry top part of the stocking and my husband actually picked this fabric when we were together at Hobby Lobby. It has like a faux leather on one side and then the fluffiness on the other. <laughs> I didn't need that much of this and I think I honestly got like what was remaining on the bolt. I cut them down to the desired length that I wanted them and then I placed them on top of each of the stockings and then of course cut them down to size. Now, when it comes to creating multiple things like this, it is always to have everything pre-cut first, and then you can start sewing everything together. Now, this step you don't have to follow, but I am doing it because this tartan fabric is very flimsy, and I didn't kind of want my you know, stockings to hang with no shape at all whatsoever. So I had this batting, and it's actually bonded batting. It's just what I had on hand, so I decided to go ahead and use it. And what I did was I cut one piece per stocking. You could very well double this up, but it's not really necessary. I just found that, you know, I kind of want to see the form and shape of it. And again, this was just very soft, flimsy fabric. And I thought this was just a nice extra step to give it a more stiffer look. Now, again, this one was iron on, so I did have to iron on each of them. But if you don't have this type, you can always sew it on. All right, it's time to assemble. And as you can see here, I have the one with batting on top of the part of the stocking that's furry, but it's facing in. The inside part is actually facing to the outside because remember, we're flipping this over. So I just laid it right on top and I'm about to stitch these together just like this. And just a disclaimer, I am not a professional seamstress. I am probably making some mistakes here. It's totally fine. This is just what I found to help me. And I was trying to make this as simple as possible for anyone else who wanted to try this. Okay, so if you have been following me on Instagram, this is the project that really gave me so many headaches. So I went through all the headaches for you so that you don't have to, so pay attention. <laughs> all right, so this is how you attach these two correctly. It's a little tricky because you're gonna have the right side of the furry part facing you, but it's actually the inside of the stocking. So if you have batting, make sure it's facing out, and I just face that one down on the table. And then the other one facing out to you. Now, the furry part needs to be facing you and the inside wrong part needs to be facing inside, but the inside of the stockings are the right sides that go out. I hope that made sense. Okay, so next you're gonna be pinning down the bottom portion of the stocking. You're gonna start sewing underneath that furry top for the stocking and you're gonna go all the way around. All right, the reason you stop just underneath the furry part is if, if I would have taken that seam all the way up, you would flip over the stocking and then when you flipped the furry part back over onto itself, you would see this part on the outside and you don't want that. So in order to have it look the right way, you're gonna have to flip that stocking over right side out, just like this, but then you're gonna have to flip out those seams at the top and then sew them down this way now once those are sewn together this is a good time to make sure to trim both of those ends that way they are both the same lengths all the way around now the good thing about this kind of fabric is that you don't need to do a seam at the very end because it doesn't fray and if you do cut some pieces off the end of it you can go back and sew those little ends together so that they don't come apart 
Finally, the last thing you want to do is remove any excess seam allowance that you may have. You want to get it as tight as possible so that when you flip it over, you get those nice crisp edges on your stocking on the exterior. Flip your stocking right side out and cut any excess fabric on the top furry part of your stocking. The last thing you need to do is add a little hook so that you can hang it. And all I did was take some regular ribbon. I put it in the center of the back seam, pinned it down, and then sewed it right on. And that is how you create stockings with a nice furry top. Now for this next DIY, I'm going to be creating kind of like a keepsake ornament for this year, like one that says, you know, 2021. I've never done this before, but it might be a tradition going forward. I don't know. Do you do that? I found this little hook at Dollar Tree and I thought it was just so pretty, but I didn't want to use it as a hook. So I took it apart and I remove that little pretty detailing in the front, kind of like that scroll work and I sanded it smooth. Now using that same paper that we used in that other frame, I decided to go ahead and cut out a piece for this one. I used some Elmer's glue spray paint that I found at Dollar Tree. I've never used it before, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try. And I sprayed it on and then spread it throughout with a brush and adhered the paper. Next, using that beautiful gold paint from earlier, I decided to paint the entire scroll work. Once it was dry, I adhered it back onto the little plaque with some craft glue. And then I made sure to paint the borders with the gold as well. Next, I had these little letter board numbers that I've had forever and I honestly, I have never used them, so I decided why not. I removed the little tabs on the back so that they can lie flat. I painted them and then glued them on to the little ornament and I think it just turned out so darling. For, the next, for these next two ornament DIYs, these are gonna be really simple. And I wanted to share this because Hobby Lobby has this box of six bells. And I just love bells. They're so classic, they're beautiful, and you can customize them to any decor. Now, the reason I chose these was because they were $6.99 for six, but they're half off. So you get six for $3.50, which is a great deal. And I just used that same spray paint from earlier to give them more of a antique high end look because I wasn't really liking the rust color. And honestly, the only thing they need is some ribbon to match your decor. And that is it. And finally, I have these blush ornaments that I had on hand. These are glass ornaments actually. And you guys know I was changing my entire decor this year and I wanted to do it as inexpensively as possible. I hadn't used these for years, so these were good to go. And I used this beautiful treasure gold in green gold. Again, highly pigmented and it works great. Now, what I did with this was I used this little sponge brush and I dabbed the paint all over it. And when you paint with a sponge brush and you dab on it, it creates these little bumps or bubbles. And if you let them dry just as is, they'll stay and it'll give your ornaments a really nice texture. It is a little hard to capture on camera, but it's there and you know i just wanted to show you guys another option of updating your old outdated ornaments to give it fresh new life again without spending an arm and a leg on brand new decorations this year and i think these turned out really cute as well
And finally, I wanted to share how my Christmas tree turned out with all of my DIY ornaments from not just this video, but my previous videos that I had created. I think it turned out beautiful. It's very simple, but I do like that classic old world yet very traditional classic look. I don't even know what this is, but I'm loving it. Tell me what you think. And that joy ornament was another DIY as well. I created that beautiful round wreath ornament in my Christmas in July video where I shared my new color scheme. I'll link to that video if you haven't seen it. That ribbon is doubled up and I got both of them from Walmart. The pretty gold star ornament is from a Dollar Tree this year. it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give this video a like let me know in the comments below which one of these diys was your favorite and how the christmas tree turned out before i sign off i did want to let you know that my daughter and i have been working on a video and it will be coming out in the next several days and we can't wait to share that with you as well i hope your christmas season is starting off on a great start and i will see you guys in the next video until then adios